Welcome to Transformational Vedic Astrology. My name is Michael Mastro. Uh, today we're going to look at the uh, birth chart for Steve Jobs. Um, <clears throat> if you look to the eastern horizon when he was born, you would see the constellation associated with Leo rising at 29 degrees. And uh, We're going to look and see how the planets are operating, when they are op uh, operating during different events in his life, and then we'll look at what we could do to improve the chart, the remedies. So, um, first we're going to look and see uh, where the Multicona signs fall. So, uh, um, many planets rule two signs, but only one is the Multricona sign. It's the one that's closely uh, connected with that particular planet. So, for example, Venus rules Libra and Taurus. And Venus is all about relationships and, and Libra is all about relationships. So it's more connected to 5, 6, 7, 9, 11. So whatever houses those signs fall in are what Steve came to work on in this life. So first we see the first sign of Aries ruled by Mars. He's in the house of uh, spirituality and teachers and good fortune. Then we see the fourth sign of Cancer uh, ruled by Moon in the eighth, uh, the twelfth house, which is a Dustana challenging house. So Moon becomes a functional malefic for this chart along with Rahu and K2. But this is the house of spiritual growth through letting go of past attachments and hospitalization and feeling separate. Then we have the sixth sign of Mercury, I mean of, of Virgo ruled by Mercury in the second house. So he's working on wealth, reputation, continuation of the marital bond. Then you have the seventh sign of Libra in, uh, in the third house of entrepreneurial success working on that definitely. Uh, the ninth sign of Sagittarius ruled by Jupiter in the house of creativity, education, investments. Then you have the 11th sign of Aquarius ruled by Saturn in the house of partnerships. So his success through came through partnerships. So let's look and see how the planets are operating. So Sun is at 12, and, and now this 29 degrees right of the rising sign, uh, rising uh, Leo rising at 29 degrees becomes the most effective point of every house. It's a very sensitive point. So any planets that are within five degrees like Venus, uh, like Jupiter, uh, have a, a lot of impact in this chart. So Sun is at 12 degrees. It's uh, afflicted by K2. Uh, and it is uh, ruling the first house. First house has to do with longevity, health, and so definitely he, had, he was working on health um, for a big part of his life. Um, An image, all of those things. Now, he, uh, his son also represents father. So he was adopted and didn't get a lot of support from his parents, from his father. So... Um, and it's probably because uh, K2 was afflicting um, that. Uh, now, also, uh, Sun is connected with heart and digestion. So part of his hormonal imbalance that, that affected his health uh, was his inability to digest protein. Um, and then also, Sun is the leader. And when it's afflicted by Rahu or K2... Um, that power goes to your head and you can become a little tyrannical. So he also had that issue of control going on with the business. Moon is at 14 degrees. And remember we said it, it can be malefic, but in the birth chart, it's not. Uh, it's not afflicting anything. It's not close to the most effective point. So no issue there, but in the transit chart, it can cause harm through conjunction uh, at, or aspect, if it's within five degrees, or if it's on the most effective point, it can afflict different houses that it's in. 
uh, and then the house that's opposite seven houses away. So, uh, so it gives him spiritual growth through letting go of past attachments, it gives him, it's in this house of research and development, so research into the IT industry and computers and all those things. Um, also, this house has to do with drugs, sleep issues, uh, addiction. So he did have some of that. But it, also, he went to India. He had a spiritual quest at some point in his life. It was during a moon period. Um, Mars is at five degrees. It is afflicted by Rahu. But Mars in his chart is it's in its own sign, which gives it some strength. Um, so it gives him good fortune through creativity. Um, uh, it's fairly strong and, uh, and gives him passion and leadership uh, abilities, but also because it is afflicted, um, makes him a little bit controlling. So Jupiter and forceful. And Jupiter is at 27 degrees, close to the most effective point. It is ruling the house of creativity and innovation, and it's placed in the house of income. So it says that he can have income through his creativity, his visionary, um, charismatic uh, nature. But it is in old age. Any planet that's less than 5 degrees or more than 25 degrees is said to be in old age or infant state, and it cannot protect or promote all of its significations. So in later in life, it gave uh, Jupiter's connected to liver and pancreas, so some issues came up there. Venus is at 27 degrees, close to the most effective point, has a lot of impact. Um, it is ruling the house of entrepreneurial success, and it is placed in the house of creativity. So it's through his creativity, his visionary abilities, his eye for beauty, um, that he, he got his entrepreneurial success. Now, uh, you know, before they, uh, he came along, uh, computers were just a box, but he made them rounded and with a lot of colors and beautiful to touch. And so all of that innovation really helped his success um, through Venus. Um, so Saturn is at 27 degrees, close to the most effective point. It's exalted, one of his strongest planets, even though it's an old age. Um, and it uh, rules this house of partnerships. So it's through his partnerships, and now it's placed in, in the house of entrepreneurial success. So entrepreneurial success comes through partnership with Stephen Wozniak, um, and uh, then uh, uh, Rahu and K2 um, are also not close to the most effective point. Rahu's in that fifth house, so it gives him uh, desire, ambition for that creativity, that innovation. K2 gives insights uh, into creating wealth, uh, in, uh, expanding income, and, and through also through social connections. Now... Um, let's go through the timing of events. So it all started in a garage when they created a circuit board in 1976, which was during a K2 Venus period. Venus again, innovation, and uh, K2 uh, insights uh, into um, creating wealth. Uh, then we have um, his best period was from 79 uh, in this, uh, in 1979, when he went from 10 million to 100 million, that was during a K2 Jupiter period. So insights into Jupiter expansion, creating wealth, um, creativity, all of that. And then he got married during a Venus period. Venus uh, represents wife in 91. Uh, then in 99, he was um, in this movie called, or, you know, he was, depicted in a movie called Pirates of Silicon Valley uh, and uh, that he increased his reputation and visibility that was during a Venus Mercury period so Venus again uh, about the entertainment industry Mercury is about communications 
Um, and Venus is also, it increased his entrepreneurial success. Um, in 2004, he had surgery on his pancreas. Uh, so uh, that was during a Jupiter period, Jupiter connected to um, pancreas and liver. In 2009, he had a liver transplant during a Moon-Mars period. Mars is surgery itself, and Moon is in the uh, ruling the house of surgery. In 8:24-11, he retired uh, during a Moon period. That's end endings, um, and then uh, died um, uh, October 5th, 2011, during a Moon-Jupiter period. Moon again endings, hospitalization, um, Jupiter connected with that liver or the pancre pancreatic cancer. Uh, so let's look at the um, transits at that point. So this is the transit chart. We can see that the outer circle is where the planets were when he died. The inner circle is where the planets were when he was born. So we see in this chart, uh, we have Rahu at 22 degrees, and that is afflicting uh, K2, excuse me, K2 is at 22 degrees, and it's afflicting Saturn at 20, uh, around uh, 25 degrees, um, and Saturn is longevity, and it's afflicting Mercury, so he also died of respiratory uh, issues. Uh, so Mercury is connected to respiratory issues. Um, so yeah, I think that's the main, main thing. Um, so thank you for listening. Um, if you're interested in getting a Vedic astrology reading, you can go to uh, vastucreations.com uh, under services. If you're interested in learning about transformation of Vedic astrology, you can see how accurate it is. Um, you can go to AmericanInstituteOfVastu.com. And thank you so much for listening.